الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ثم ما بعد ما من نور رحمه الله تعالى in the book of uh, prohibited actions قال in hadith number 1687 وعن ابي الهياج حيان بن حسين قال قال لي علي بن ابي طالب رضي الله عنه ألا أبعثك على ما بعثني عليه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا تدع صورة إلا طمستها ولا قبرا مشرفا إلا سويته رواه مسلم In this hadith Abu, uh, al- uh, Abu Al-Hayyaj Hayyan ibn Hussain he says Ali ibn Abi Talib رضي الله عنه once he told me he said to me so this is one of the followers of Ali ibn Abi Talib رضي الله عنه he said, shall I not send you uh, to do a task that Allah's Messenger وسلم, had assigned to me? Like, shall I send you out on a task the Prophet وسلم, once assigned me to take care of? Obviously, it's an honor, right? So someone says, look, this is what the Prophet assigned for me to do. I want to assign you to do the exact same thing. I will definitely would love to follow into the footstep of someone who was instructed by Rasulullah So he told him, he said, absolutely. قال, and he told him so. He said, spare no portrait unwiped out and leave not a high grave unleveled. رواه مسلم. Two things. Don't leave any pictures, any images, any statues, but removing them. And also, if you see any grave that is above the ground, high, rise, put it to the ground, level it. So here are two things. The first thing is about the portraits and the pictures. We've been talking about this for the past few nights. So that's the, one of the last ahadith about the subject here. And which means, okay, now that I have all these, you know, hand-drawn pictures, I have these statues and figurines in the house, some of them are crystal, some of them are porcelain and all this stuff, what am I going to do with that stuff? Can I sell it? That someone might say, can I sell it to get money back out of this? Well, if you sell it, even though I know that you're not worshipping this thing, but it's still considered a statue in the Islamic definition of these figurines. So therefore, you're not supposed to make money, actually, of these things. Uh, and we're talking here about any of these images that comes on the human image or um, the image of, uh, of an animal. We're not talking about kids' toys. These are different stuff. So that's, that's different. That's acceptable. Uh, but we're talking about figurines that people sometimes they put on their uh, uh, showcases and shelves and displays and so on. Why toys, kids' toys are okay and can be forgiven in that regard? Because the ulama, they say, anything ala surah ghayr al-muhtarma, or surah al-mumtahana, if that image is not really respected, it means if it's going to be put into, it's not being put on a, on a, on a pedestal for, of respect or of reverence, it's fine. So these toys, usually, they are put, thrown on the ground, uh, they're stuffed in boxes, kids, you know, they're, they drool over them, all these kind of things, right? So there isn't really that reverence given to these kind of uh, uh, toys and so on. So it's a different. But we're talking about these statues that people put on, you know, on display. That's the other thing that needs to be removed. In terms of pictures, the same thing. We're talking about hand-drawn pictures that needs to be removed. And of course, obviously, if it's, if it's a, um, a digital portrait, we say that you don't have to completely destroy it, but at least don't put it on display. You can put it on your phone put it on your digital album or in whatever that you put as storage, but it does not need to be on display. Otherwise, it needs to be removed. So Ali ibn Abi Talib was instructed to do that, radiallahu ta'ala anhu warda. Now, what about um, when you go home, sometimes you'll find pictures all over the place. On sometimes on, uh, let's say, uh, on a food box, on a cereal food box. What are you gonna do with this? You have a magazine that comes to you, for example, and you see all these images as well too. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna keep you know, wiping these out all, every time I receive something like this? So I read recently for some of the ulama, the contemporary scholars, they say, this is mimma ammat bihi al-balwa, which means we are overwhelmed in terms of this trial that we go through right now because of it, it we are, it's overwhelming. As long as these things are not put in, on display for people, it's muhana, because some of these magazines end up where? In the recycling bin, for example or thrown in the, in the trash, or maybe use them to wrap something with it, uh, whatever that is. So this is not respected image. It should be okay, you have to worry about that. But again, these statues and, and the figurine needs to be removed. I remember when I, was in, when I first arrived in Bosnia, and a few weeks later, subhanAllah, my uh, landlady that we used to live in, her, uh, in, in an apartment in her building, one day she comes to me and she knocks on the door, 
and she calls to me, come out, I want to talk to you. So I come out, and then she says, follow me. So I follow her to the, to her, to the uh, upper level where she lives. She goes, wait for me over here. And then she goes inside the house, and she comes back with all these fancy figurines and, and crystal uh, uh, you know, statues and, and all that stuff, porcelain. She goes, is this halal or haram? I'm like, oh man, that's tough. <laughs> Looking at them, they look very expensive, really. It, 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 has, it has monetary value in the market, probably. But she was asking me, she goes, is this halal or haram to keep in the house? And I'm just trying to be kind of diplomatic with her, but she said, just tell me, is this halal or haram? I said, well, obviously, no, you're not supposed to keep it at home. She goes straight to the trash bin inside, outside of the house, and she drops them all down there. And she goes, salam alaikum, she went into the house and she closed the door. And I remain standing out there just like, what just happened? <laughs> but that for me was a great lesson. You preach a lot on the meaning of It's not for a believing man or woman whenever they've been given the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make a choice about it. If that was coming from Allah, we say سَمِعْنَا وَاطَعْنَا We listen and we obey. From the Prophet we say سَمِعْنَا وَاطَعْنَا So these things need to be taken care of. And as for the graves, I've known, I've, we've seen that in Muslim traditional culture and fortune where people start violating this rule of the Prophet If you go to al baqiq near Medina, you will see for yourself. al baqiq is, is the example how graves should look like. We say, but how am I going to recognize my mom, my dad, my uncle? You don't have to. Once we're, we're dead, we're all equal now. So therefore, you will see that all the graves are just marked with simple headstone here and footstone there, small, tiny ones, and that's it. No names, no age, nothing. And subhanAllah, I've, sound, I've seen this with my own eyes in, in other countries, such as in Kuwait as well too, where even the emirs and the kings of these countries, they're buried in the, the exact same way. Like everybody else. Except they put a section for them to save the royal family. But in terms of the graves, nothing fancy, no structure, no marble, no nothing. That's how it's supposed to be. Because death is an equalizer over here. So in some cultures right now, what people do, they want to mark the grave and uh, solidify that and fortify that grave. So they put marbles and they make it higher in the ground, above the ground and all these kind of things. And as we have seen from this hadith in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it says, Wala illa Don't leave any grave that is high, but you level it to the ground. These are the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, instructions that we should be actually observed and take care of. May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa make us among those who listen to the speech and follow the best of it, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Wallahu Alam. Any questions, Jamaa? Yes. What do, you, what do you mean? Where? Yeah, right now, so the Rebbe do the same thing. So not, that doesn't mean that, mashallah, they're, yani, they're right. <laughs> Whatever, any statue that you put out there is not acceptable. Yani. No. Yes? Yes. A headstone that is flat, yes. You can have a name on You can. There is, no, there is no prohibition against that. But don't make it. No, make it very high. No, nah. Wallahu mm -hmm. Alam. We talked about uh, these actually uh, uh, um, cartoon characters that does not necessarily resemble human beings. So in this case, these are okay, these images. If you pray, you have to close the book and remove it. It doesn't really matter because that would not prevent the angels from coming in. No. Yes. No. So why, why it's okay to take a picture, digital picture, it's permissible, but why it's prohibited to hang it and put it on display? Uh, because the, there are two hukum over here. The picture itself, if it was hand thrown, that's prohibited. Because yudahi khalqullah, because this is like trying to resemble the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The digital right now is not, doesn't have that problem, because it's just a reflection of Allah's creation itself. However, the display of images 
it doesn't matter what kind of image in that regard. If it has ruh in it, like a human or anything, it shouldn't be on display. So the display of images regardless should be removed completely. And uh, the, only, the only way you could, you're allowed to keep the, this image on display if it was not in a, in a, a position of ihtiram, if it wasn't revered or respected in that sense. Meaning what? If it was, for example, on a carpet. Let's say you have a carpet or maybe a rug that has a, a lion's image, for example. Is that okay to do that? Yes, because you step on it. If it was put on recliners, because also people sit on them and they recline on them, that's fine, that's okay. If it was put on couches, for example, for design, that's okay. But not to be on display. So nowadays people, they put their own personal images on their pillows and also on, uh, what do you call, on, on their blankets. Same thing, because that's not a respected actually thing. I need to, because usually that's kind of like put it on the floor, throw it here and there, that's fine. But not put it on a, on a screen that you keep it on the, on the wall or on a stand or anything like that. Wallahu ta'ala. For the same reason that images led to shirk billah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shirk of Allah azza wa jal, and that's why it's more of like a preventive measurement. Wallahu a'lam. Khair inshallah. Uh, I guess we're going to have to stop it here. Subhanakallah. Alhamdulillah. Ashhadu alaykum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.